In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a simple and effective method to correct mismatched colors using solid fill layers and go from here to here in no time at all. Hi again, Michael Bolshevich here from Vibrant Shot. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Vibrant Shot and also at vibrantshot.com. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you a simple and intuitive technique for fixing mismatched tones. Now we're going to be using two sample images that I shot. And if we just uh, zoom out here, you'll see what I'm talking about. So in this particular image, we can see that we have uh, this nice kind of peachy reddish tone in the skin on the face. But then we have this green cyan sort of color down here in the neck and chest. And that's actually a pretty common problem uh, when shooting uh, studio shots where you have uh, a fairly small light source like a beauty dish or something along those lines. And we're also going to use this image over here where we see that we have a similar problem but the effect is a little bit more subtle. So we have uh, this more golden tone along the top of the body and then we have more of a reddish tone down at the bottom in the leg. So we're going to be correcting actually both of these problems. Now the majority of this process is automated so you will get an action that will help you to automate this process but there is uh, a couple of steps that you have to do manually essentially and I'm going to show you two variations of those manual steps that you can take. So the first one uh, basically involves using just the eyedropper tool so you can hit the I key and that will select the eyedropper for you and what you want to do is make sure that you change your sample size to something like 31 by 31 or 51 by 51 average obviously depending on the surface area you're working with just make sure it's not point sample because with point sample um, it generally won't give you a terribly accurate representation of the colors because if you pick one pore, it could be a lot darker or a lot lighter than the skin around it. So just make sure you pick an appropriate number here. In this case, I'm going to pick something like 51 by 51. So I'm going to start off by picking um, my area that I want to correct. Now this does work best if the area you want to correct is darker in luminosity than the area that you're uh, sampling from. And majority of the time that is the problem. Uh, if that's not the case, uh, I'll show you how you can kind of adjust it afterwards here. But for the most part, you know, it's ideal in situations where you have uh, a darker color in the problem area. And like I said, that is the majority of cases. So let's go ahead and sample something down here. Basically, I want to sample something that's, you know, fairly close to the luminance value that I'm going to be sampling from. So I'm going to pick this area here where I have a little bit of highlight, a little bit of midtone, a little bit of shadow around it. So just grab a point there. Next thing I'm going to do after I've sampled that is I'm going to throw that color in the background. And I can do that just by hitting the X key. And you'll see when you hit X, you're actually cycling between the foreground and background colors. So I want this color in the background and then I'm going to sample my foreground tone over here. So I'm going to grab something like this. Now, if the uh, ordering is wrong, just hit the X key again and that will just flip it around. So like I said, lighter color in the front, uh, darker color as your background color. So now that we have those selected, all we need to do is run this action that I'm going to give you a link for. It's this one here called the VS Tonal Div Fix uh, SACA, which stands for uh, Subtracted Average Color Adjustment for lack of a better name. So basically we're just gonna run this here and it's gonna churn through a couple of steps. And essentially what it's doing is it's actually calculating the difference between these two colors, creating a solid fill layer out of that difference and it's going to blend that with the Color Dodge blend mode. Now, um, it's going to create this group for you here called VS Diff Fixer, and that's basically the grouping for making this correction. It's masked out, so you actually have to mask in the area you want to fix, which you're going to have to do regardless of what method you use. Now, there are a bunch of different methods that you can use for this, by the way. You can use hue saturation, curves, uh, selective color, but the purpose of this method is just to show you a simple and intuitive way of doing it. So back to our um, mask over here, let's just grab that and we're going to just grab a white brush and I'm going to paint this in. Um, if you want to be really precise about it, you could, uh, you know, lasso tool this in or pen tool this in or something along those lines. But for the purpose of demonstration, I think this is going to work just fine. So let's just go ahead and brush in this neck and chest area here. Like so. All right, there we are. So as you can see, that has corrected the color quite nicely. Now, if you didn't select the perfect source and destination luminosity values, you're gonna have to do a little bit of luminosity correction. And for that, I provided two of these uh, curves adjustments here. They're both set to 0% opacity. So you're gonna have to uh, increase them if you want to lighten or increase the darker one if you wanna darken. 
So in this case, I want to darken this down a little bit. So I'm going to select my diff darken uh, layer here. I'm just going to increase the opacity to, well, let's say around 10%. So now if we just toggle that on and off, we see that that's taking care of our color correction for us. And this has just kind of darkened it a little bit to bring it more into line. Now, in this case, I do actually want to exclude it from this hair. So a really simple way to do that is just to double click on this diff fix color, which is actually performing our color correction for us. Double click on that. And I'm just going to use our blend if tools here to pull that effect out of the hair. So if we can see it here, you can see the hair going lighter. And as I pull this down, the hair darkens out. So at this level, we're actually clipping it from this area here, which we don't want. So we're probably going to stop around here and just split these sliders so that that transitions nicely. And you can split these sliders by holding the alt or option key. So that's just going to get rid of it from our hair there. So again, just toggling on and off. There we are. Now we're going to apply the same technique to this image. But we're going to put a slightly different spin on it. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to create a specific averaging sample area. So let's just go ahead and hit uh, Command J to duplicate our layer here. And uh, this is just going to be a temporary layer for us that we're going to delete um, after we're done. So grab our lasso tool here and we're going to just select our destination area. It doesn't matter whether you do destination or source first, but uh, let's just go ahead and grab something like this. So I have a little bit of the highlight in the leg, a little bit of the shadow in the leg, a little bit of midtone. I figure that's going to be a pretty good representation of that. So once we've made our selection on our layer, our temporary layer, uh, we're going to go to filter, blur, and select average. And that's basically going to just create the average color in that area for us. So deselecting that, I'm now going to grab my source area. So let's say I'm going to grab something like this here where I like the color of the arm and a little bit in the back of the arm here to include a bit of shadow. So something like that. And again, I'm just going to repeat the last command. So you can always do that by either selecting the top option here or hit command F and that will replay the last command, which is the average command. So I'm going to hit command D to deselect that. And we're going to go back into our eyedropper. Now in this case, make sure you go back to uh, point sample or three by three average, because with 51 by 51, I'll actually select, you know, sort of if I select here, I'll select both this average color and whatever's kind of beyond it. So um, just make sure you have something small here. So three by three is going to work nicely. So I'm going to sample that, throw that color in the background, sample this. Now this is actually my darker color here. So I'm going to just hit X to flip those. Again, we want the lighter color as our foreground color, darker color as our background color. Again, I'm just going to go ahead and run this action here. So VS Tonal Diff Fix SACA. That's going to chug through. And now I've actually made a selection of the legs for myself before here. So let's just disable this temporary layer. We can essentially just delete it now. Uh, we're done with it. So I'm just going to go in and uh, grab the selection I made here. I just did that quickly using quick select. And we're just going to uh, paint in that area. So I'm just going to select my mask and hit option delete to fill with white. So as you can see, that has corrected the color, but now we still have a little bit of a luminosity difference. So let's just go in here into our lighten layer. I'm just going to actually brighten this up a little bit more. So let's just take this up until we like the way it looks. And I think that's pretty good for me. And so just toggling that on and off, we see that we've made that color correction and then we've lightened it a little bit just to account for uh, some of the luminosity shift that's in there. So like I said, there's tons of different ways to perform color corrections. Um, you can use something like hue saturation or curves to do it. Uh, but as you can see, this is a pretty simple and intuitive way of um, achieving the same thing. And uh, one thing that I will mention is if you do have multiple body parts that you need to correct, so let's say we beyond, beyond the legs, we had another area that was a different color, um, just rename this layer over here, or I should say this group, um, just call it something like diff fixer legs. And now you can go ahead and play the action again. It will just kind of keep building groups over top of one another. So I hope you found that useful. Um, go ahead, download the action, try it out, and uh, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel below so you can get more tips like this in the future. And also visit us at facebook.com slash vibrantshot. Bye for now.